Swales are a passive way to move and hold water across landscapes. They flow wide on contour, capturing rain and irrigation. They're especially useful in dry climates like our homestead here in Colorado. So it's important we use our water resources efficiently for food production. Swales are for growing trees, and trees provide shade, compaction remediation, and a ton of organic matter that gets recycled back to feed organisms like this microarthropod. Our goal for our next series on the channel is to learn to live off our land through permaculture design, coupled with the understanding of microbiology, specifically of the soil food web. Utilizing modern science and homesteading traditions to create the most ideal roadmap to successful organic nutrition. Thanks for joining, I'm Kay the Guy. Swales are easy to build, but you need a method for marking a leveled line to cut your trenches. Some cheap 1 by 2 inch planks make for easy setup of the level. Start with a simple A-frame design with as much height and width as you want. The wider the legs, the further the distance you'll have to cover more ground. Using a level to get a straight line to match the string line with something heavy to weigh down the string at the bottom. Once the weight is tied and level marked, it's time to cut some trenches. I'm using a Bobcat 863 skid steer to speed up the process and I found that using heavy equipment is way better than digging by hand saving my back for smaller work. I work in small sections to increase accuracy of the swale. The depth and width of your swale will depend on your slope. This is our infrastructure of waterways and can be changed later once we have established a baseline of how well our water flows to various places of our field. This is a 100% passive system using only gravity and water pressure to fill both sections of our field. I'm adding in the method to filling our swale with our pre-existing drip net system as you can see here, with my drain set to fill the lower swale here. I'm using the drip net flexible tubing because I had a bunch left over and don't like to waste anything, but you can use PVC if you want. After everything is set up, I test delivery of water to its destination. Now that my swales are dug and water set up, I'm planting my host trees on the lower side of the swale. These are red oak trees that I will use to bring in lots of additional shade that will slow evaporation in the swale, drop new organic matter on the floor every year, and provide dense oak limbs that I can use as a great source for growing edible mushrooms in the future. We have had some issues with deer eating our saplings, so these tree protectors should allow these new plants the protection needed for them to get a good head start. Just as an experiment, we decided to plant some truffle inoculated wheat seeds near the base of the oak trees, as truffles pair with this type of species of tree, but it's never been done in Colorado, but it's worth a shot. So as you can see, as vegetation starts to grow, as our waterways are built and water is being brought onto the land, various plants will start to volunteer and grow, like some grass, hay, and alfalfa, and these volunteer trees, like these elms here, uh, which uh, Jeff Lawton likes to say, the plants that decide to come in, they're the ones that are volunteering for the job to replenish the soil and pull those nutrients out of the ground and bring it back to the topsoil. But trees like this, they just sprout out on their own. We don't particularly like these kinds of trees, but again, we are in search of plants that will add as much organic matter to the land with as little maintenance energy as possible. And if you follow our channel, you'll know that beneficial organisms thrive on decaying organic matter. The biggest issue for most growers in restoring soil is not enough organic matter.
Once these trees grow to a large enough size, we'll cut them down, chip and mulch all the organic matter to add as much food for our microorganisms, then replant the food productive trees and shrubs like berries to our food forest in its place. This is as close to working with nature as it gets and is a system for restoring land that closely parallels how nature's design works. Our job is to tend to our land and get it to its maximum production with as little input energy as possible. This is how regeneration becomes sustainability. Be sure to stay tuned in to our next episode where we will get deep into how to create Soul Food Web approved compost, what biologically complete means, and what kind of organisms we search for when partnering with nature's best gardeners. Subscribe for more videos and like this video as it helps us spread our message further. Thanks for joining and we'll see you in the next episode.